Hello people, welcome to Kariyati. In this session also we are going to discuss some of the TCS NQT numerical ability questions. And I have included previous session links in description. If you haven't watched, please have a look at it. Now, let's enter into our first question. A file of cadets consisting of 15 rows and 10 columns measures 420 meter length along the direction of their marching. How much time would it take to march for a stretch of 3 km if the stride of each cadet is 80 cm and he takes 57 strides per minute? See, this question is purely based on trains crossing each other or train crossing a platform, right? See, here you have a cadet and their length is 420 meters. Right, you don't want to worry about this unnecessary information. So 15 rows and 10 columns, you don't need to bother about that. Right, so these people are marching and their length is 420 meter. So we have uh, people standing in 15 rows and uh, 10 columns. Right, so we don't want to consider that. So the length of this Cadet is 420 meter and they have to cross the stretch of 3 kilometer, right? So what is 3 kilometer? We know 1 kilometer is 1000 meter. Then 3 kilometer will be 3000 meter. So these people have to cross this 3000 meter. Okay, now what is speed of this uh, cadets? So the stride of each cadet is 80 centimeter right so they will take 80 centimeter and in each minute they will take 57 strides so we have to find the time taken by this cadet to cross this platform so time equal to distance by speed so what is the total distance so it is 420 plus 3000 that is 3420 meter divided by speed so speed is they will take 80 centimeter right so their length is i mean uh, their speed is 80 centimeter and in one minute they will take 57 strides so we have we can find uh, the time in seconds right so in numerator you have the length in meters so in denominator you can find the speed in meter per second right so it is 80 centimeter so 80 centimeter is nothing but 80 by 100 meters right so because uh, one meter is nothing but 100 centimeter so we can write 80 centimeters as 80 by 100 meters into so in one minute they are taking i mean uh, their uh, stride length is 80 centimeter and in one meter they are taking 57 such strides right so in one minute if they take 57 such strides in one second they will take 57 divided by 60 strides right so one minute is nothing but 60 seconds so we are writing 57 strides per minute is 57 by 60 strides per second right now if you cancel it you will get the answer so you can write 3420 divided by 80 into 57 and 100 into 60 is 6000 you can write that 6000 at top so 00, zero cancel and if you cancel this it is uh, yeah 7 times 56 carry 4 it is 750 and if you cancel this you will get how many times mm, yeah 6 times right so six sevens are 42 four and six fives are 30 yes six times so six into 750 so we get four five zero zero so what is four five zero zero so in four five zero zero seconds they will cross that three thousand meter right so you have to represent this four thousand five hundred seconds in hours so four thousand five hundred seconds is how many minutes so you have to divide this by 60 so if you divide this by 60 you get 7 times 42 and it's carry 3 so 75 minutes so 75 minutes is 1 hour and 15 minutes right so 1 hour and 15 minutes is the time taken by this cadet to cross that 3 kilometer so answer for this question is 1 hour and 15 minutes hope you understood now moving to second question how much percentage is 0 0.5 percentage of 250 percentage of 3 of 0 0.375 so it's very simple how much percentage is x of y so how we will write it is x by y into 100 so you have the values in bracket is x and after of you have y so 0 0.5 percent so 0 0.5 percent is nothing but 0 0.5 by 100 so instead of of we have to use into so it is 250 by 100 into 3 whole divided by 0 0.375 into 100 so in 50th table uh, it will go for 5 times in 50th table it is 2 times and this can be written as 1 by 200 
and you can cancel this you get 1 by 40 yes you have 3 by 80 so 3 by 80 into 0 0.375 into 100 so we can cancel this 0 and 0 and this can be cancelled it is 0 0.125 so 1 by 8 into 0 0.125 into 10 so what is 1 by Z, uh, 8 into 0 0.125 so 8 into 0 0.125 is 1. So 1 by 1 into 10. So that is nothing but 10%. So answer for this question is 10%. Hope you understood. It's very simple question, right? So we shall go to next question. Six men and 12 women could complete an assigned task in three days. A QC team found that together they can do seven times as much work a man and a woman can do. In how many days would 14 men do the same work? So, 6 men and 12 men could complete the task in 3 days. And a QC team found the 6 men and 12 women can do 7 times the work that a man and a woman do. Right. So, they will do 7 times the work that 1 man and 1 woman do. So, 6 men plus 12 men equivalent to 7 men plus 7 women. So, you can say 1 man's work is equivalent to 12 minus 7. 5 women. So, 1 man's work is equal to 5 women. Now, you have to find in how many days 14 women will do the same work. So, which work? So, the 6 men and 12 women is working for 3 days, right? So, the same work will be completed by that 14 women in how many days? So, you can equate like this. So, 6 men and 12 women can complete the job in 3 days. Only 14 women will complete the same job in how many days? So, instead of this uh, male, you can convert it to female, right? So, 1 man equal to 5 women. So, 6 into 5, it is 30 women. So, 30 women plus 12 women into 3 equivalent to 14 women into question mark. So, 30 plus 12 is 42 women into 3 equivalent to 14 women into question mark. So, 14 and 42, it is 3 times. So, question mark equal to 3 into 3, 9. So, these 14 women will complete the same job in 9 days. So, this becomes our answer. So, the question is based on time and work. So, we go to next question. The present ages of three brothers are in the ratio 13 is to 15 is to 19. The difference between the ages of the elder and eldest is 16 years. What was the proportion of their ages before 10 years? So, we have three uh, brothers and their age ratios are 13 is to 15 is to 19. So, what will be the age ratio of the eldest one? It is 19 parts, right? So, eldest is 19 and the elder, right? So, the second eldest person that is elder, that is 15, right? Now, their age difference is 16 years. So, what, how many parts their ages are differed here? So, 19 minus 15, four parts differ. So, this four parts is nothing but 16 years, right? So, if four parts is 16, then what is one part? One part will be four years. Now, you have to find the proportion of their ages before 10 years. So, if one part is four years, what is 13 parts? So, 13 into 4, 52. 15 into 4, 60. 19 into 4, we get uh, 66. Right? So, 19 into 4, 66. Now, you have to find their proportion before 10 years. So, you have to subtract 10 from each person. So, you get 42 is to 50 is to 56. So, if you try to write in ratio, you get 21 is to 25 is to, uh, yeah. It's we are getting 28. I think I made a mistake. Yes. So I will multiply this 19 with 4 for one more time, right? So it is 4 nights. So yeah, it is 76, right? Yeah, it is 66. So you get 33. So 21 is to 25 is to 33. This becomes our answer. Hope you understood. We shall go to next question. What is the fourth proportion of 0 0.07, comma 0 0.28 and 7 by 4? So, question based on fourth proportion, third proportion and mean proportion are common in competitive examination. Especially in TCS, you have to differentiate these questions, right? So, what is mean, third, fourth, right? So, you have to differentiate that. Okay, now, uh, like assume you have four variables, right? So, where proportion of A and B will be equivalent to proportion of C and D right so we can take the first value as a second value b and third value c you have to find the fourth proportion right so that is d so a by b equivalent to c by d that is 0 0.07 by 0 0.28 is equivalent to 7 by 4 divided by you have to find the d right so you can keep it as x right 
So if you multiply both numerator and denominator by 100, you get 7 by 28. So 7 by 28 equivalent to, if you reciprocate, you get 7 by 4x. So 7, 7 cancel and 7 into 4, 28. So value of x equivalent to 7. So fourth proportion of 0 0.07, 0 0.28 and 7 by 4 is 7. So answer for this question is option B. Hope you understood it. Now moving to next question. A city water supply tank has two inlet pipes X and Y which can fill it in 40 hours and 80 hours respectively and an outlet pipe Z which can empty a full tank in 160 hours. If the tank is empty and the taps are opened in succession for one hour each and the process continues in how many hours will the tank get filled. So we have three pipes so two inlet pipes and one outlet pipe so X Y and Z. So X will fill it in 40 hours and Y will fill the tank in 80 hours and Z will empty in 160 hours. We don't know what is the total capacity of the tank. So take LCM of 40, 80 and 160, you get 160 units. So 160 units is the total capacity of the tank. So pipe X will fill this 160 units in 40 hours. So in one hour, pipe X will fill how many units? 160 by 40, we get uh, 4 units per hour. And pipe Y will fill these 160 units in 80 hours. So in one hour, it will fill 160 by 80, 2 units per hour. And pipe Z empties these 160 units in 160 hours. So in one hour, it will empty only one unit. Now it is given all are working in succession. It means first hour A will work. First hour A will work and it will fill 4 units. And second hour, I mean, first hour X will work and it will fill 4 hours. I mean, 4 unit and second hour y will work and it will fill two units and in third hour z will work and it will empty one unit now totally in three hours four plus two six six minus one five units filled right so in three hours totally five units filled so the total capacity that capacity of the tank is 160 right so that 160 units get filled in how many hours c5 into 32 we get 160 and 3 into 32 we get 96 so in 96 hours that 160 unit get filled see it's very simple just give a cross multiplication we know how to cross multiply right so if you cross multiply you get the answer 96 hours so that 160 units will be filled by all the three pipes working in succession in 96 hours so this becomes our answer moving to next question a retailer purchased 25 identical toys for a price of rupees p and sold some of this for price rupees p if he calculated his profit as eight percent with selling price as base instead of cost price then how many toys did he sell see usually we calculate profit or last percentage by keeping that cost price as base right so here instead of taking that cost price you have to keep that selling price at base so the cost price of 25 identical toys is rupees p so if 25 toys is rupees p then what is cost price of one toy that will be rupees p by 25 so this is cost price of one single toy and sold some of this for the price of p right i don't know how many toys we sold but uh, let's take i sold x toys for rupees p right so i sold x toys for rupees p then what is cost price of that x toys so if one toy is P by 25, then cost price of that X toys will be XP by 25, right? So cost price of X toys will be XP by 25 and selling price of that X toys is rupees P. Now, the total profit percentage is 8 if you keep that selling price instead of that cost price. So profit is nothing but selling price minus cost price, right? So how we will calculate profit percentage? So by keeping the cost price in base, but instead of cost price, you have to keep that selling price in base. So you get 8% profit. So 8% profit you are getting. So the selling price is rupees P and the cost price is XP by 25 divided by selling price is P into 100. Right? You understood why we write the selling price in base, right? Because in question, they are asking us to change the cost price in base as selling price. So we are writing the selling price at base. So here the selling price of X toys is rupees P. So we are writing P. And cost price of one toy is P by 25. So X toys will be XP by 25. So just cancel it, you will get the answer. So you can cancel P, right? So you get one minus X by 25 
into 100 equal to 8. So we can cancel it. It's 4 times. Yeah, so it's actually 25, right? So it is 25 minus X by 25. So if you cancel it, it is 4 times. So 8 equal to 100 minus 4X. So you can divide everything by 4. So you get 2 equal to 25 minus X. So what is the value of X? X equal to 23. So X is nothing but the number of toys we sold, right? So X toys you sold for rupees P, right? So that X is nothing but the total number of toys we sold. So answer for this question is 23 toys that person sold. Hope you understood how to solve this question. So we are so we are working the question purely based on assumption, right? So we kept the total number of toys we sold as X and uh, cost price of one tie is P by 25, right? So everything here is assumption. So based on assumption, answer for this question is 23, right? So that is a perfect answer. So we go to next question. What is the mean deviation of the data? 8, 9, 12, 15, so you have a series, you have to find the mean deviation. First, we have to understand the difference between mean deviation as well as standard deviation. So in last session, we discussed how to find standard deviation for the total population and total samples, total samples, right? So here we will be finding the mean deviation. So I will show you how to find mean deviation. So you have a series. So first you have to find mean for each series. So it is 8 plus 9, 17, 17 plus 12, it's 29, 29 plus 15. So it is 39 plus 5, it is uh, 44, 44 plus 16, it's 60, 80, uh, 80, 104, 134, 134, 166, and it is 200. Right, so 200 divided by, we have 10 numbers, so 200 by 10 is 20. So this is mean. So you have to find mean deviation. So mean deviation means the difference between the actual values as well as the uh, arithmetic mean, right? So you have to find the difference between the uh, mean as well as the given value. So what is the difference between 8 and 20? So difference between 8 and 20 is 12. And difference between 9 and 20 is 11. Difference between 12 and 20 is 8. 15 and 20 is 5. Difference between 60 and 20 is 4. 20 and 20 it is 0. 24 and 20 is 4, 30 and 20 is 10, 32 and 20 is 12, 34 and 20 is 14, right? So this is the deviation that you obtain from mean, right? So you have to find mean for this now. So 12 plus 11 plus 8 plus 5 plus 4 plus 0 plus 4 plus 10 plus 12 plus 14. So if you add it, how much we get? So it is 23, 31, 36, 40, 44, 54, 64, 66, 70, 80. So we totally get 80. So 80 divided by 10, we get 8. So this 8 is nothing but mean deviation of this given data. So answer for this question is 8. Hope you uh, understood how to find the mean deviation, right? So you have to understand the difference between standard deviation and mean deviation, right? So in upcoming season, I will come up with some other different statistical data that uh, you can expect in TCS NQT, right? Until it stay connected with career deed. And uh, I have included previous session links in description. If you haven't watched, please click and watch it and share the video to your friends. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.